Hey everybody, my name's Patrick, and in this tech tip video, we're gonna take a look at querying layers using Vertigis Studio Workflow. Let's check it out. All right, so we're gonna kick things off here in ArcGIS Online, and here I have a web map which contains a, a few different layers, and if I was to go ahead and uh, click on these layers, um, it'll take me to uh, another item here. And then basically, if I clicked on one of these layers again, we're going to see there's this URL. Now this URL is pointing to the what's called as the rest endpoint for the, uh, a layer. Um, and if we were to go back up a level, this would be the rest endpoint for the underlying feature service containing your published GIS you know, map services and, and feature services. Uh, now here, let's maybe select this water lines layer again. And if we scroll down, you'll see there's this query operation. So if you're not familiar with this, um, this is a really useful tool that, uh, that, that ArcGIS server provides and this is where you can just quickly test out some queries um, against your different data sets to return some results. So um, the most kind of common or query is what's called a, a one equals one, which is basically going to return all of the records within your database. Now, there's other uh, options here. So you could say, you know, maybe what attributes you want to be returned. So um, again, if you want to return everything, you can do an asterisk or you can enter in the specific attribute field name as uh, as you need um, and whether you want to return geometry and you know a number of other different input parameters if you go ahead and click query here this is going to issue a request to your uh, ArcGIS server with those um, inputs. And basically here we can see we've capped out and we've, we've hit the max number of results. Um, but here we can see we're returning all of the different fields. And you can adjust this so maybe we only want to return, I don't know, for example, the uh, material. Um, I can just go ahead and copy that and set that as my out field. Let's just set material. If I go ahead and click query, we're going to see we're getting a, you know, a list of the different materials. Um, further on, we can see there's like cast iron is one of the material options. I could then adjust my where clause to say, show me all of the water lines where the material equals, uh, you know, cast iron, whoops, um, cast iron. And for string values uh, or text, we have to include these uh, single quotes. That's just ArcGIS server syntax. If it's a, a number, then uh, you don't need any quotes. Uh, so again, if I click get, we're going to see now we've got, you know, 1,224 water lines that are cast iron. Um, and we could continue to go on and on and on. Now, the relevance of this to workflow is that there's a query layer activity that includes these different inputs um, that we're seeing here. So if we jump over to the uh, workflow designer over here, if you search for a query layer activity and drag it onto the design surface, there's going to be some inputs available. Um, now, you to get started, you either need to provide a URL to the map service or feature service like REST endpoint um, for that given layer, um, or we may get we may touch on this later in this video or in another video you can also retrieve the layer using um, an activity within workflow called get layer and supply that as input so those are two options and then basically the rest of these um, parameters mimic that rest endpoint so this would be your where clause you know whether you want to return geometry what output fields you want to include whether you want to include distinct values and so on and so let's go ahead and, and, and test this out. So let's uh, jump back to our uh, query here. Um, and actually, I'll open, I'll go back up one level so that here we have this feature service URL down to the, uh, the layer level, meaning here there, there's this ID. I'm going to go ahead and copy this URL, jump over here and paste it in here. Uh, and you can see here it's uh, included. And then this is where we can, um, you know, adjust our where clause. So if I wanted to, uh, you know, do the same where clause, I could say where the uh, material equals cast iron. And let's maybe set the return geometry to true. Uh, and let's set the output fields again to, I don't know, star. Um, now, in order to test this, um, there's a number of ways you can test how this works. You can look at the network tab. Um, you can use the console uh, within um, your 
application to further debug and see the results. I'll be touching on that in a separate video. Um, for now, we're just going to do a log to see the count of the, the features return. So I'm going to just add an alert here. And I'm going to do uh, equals query one. And the output, there's three options. You can get the first feature, you can get all of the features, um, and then the uh, results is going to be what's called an Esri feature set, which is the entire uh, results. Um, I'm going to go into the features here, add a period, and then there's this length property, which will just give me the number of records returned from the query. Um, now let's just expand this. So it's telling us that there's this uh, number is not a valid input. You can see that the length is a number, but text is needs to be text. So we just need to convert this to a string or a text value. So I'll just do to string and we'll get another error, um, but we just can add these little parentheses um, to make sure that we call this kind of JavaScript function to convert this number to text. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and let's run this. So let's go ahead and run this in our workflow sandbox. And here you can see we're getting one, two, two, four as the uh, you know, number of features that have been performed from our query. And if we actually look at the network tab here, we can see that there's this uh, re web request that gets sent. Um, we, if we look at the payload, this is our where clause, you know, where the material is equal to cast iron. And then if we preview this, this is basically the response showing, you know, all of those features that get returned. And we can drill in and look at the attributes of each individual feature, and the geometry of it. Um, and uh, if we wanted to modify this query, for example, let's maybe say, uh, and the diameter, the diameter is less than or equal to like 150 millimeters. Let's go ahead and then rerun that. So I'll just click OK and clear this and rerun this. You can see we're getting 551 results now. So, you know, a lot smaller. If we look at our query, and look at the payload, we can see now my where clause is getting passed through. And then we can, again, look at this and we can see there's, you know, 551 you know, results, um, basically. Um, now, lastly, uh, let's jump back to our uh, workflow here. Um, I'm going to just delete this little connector here and use a get map extent activity. And let's maybe give us a little bit of space. So let's get the current map extent and then, you know, filter our, you know, uh, our, our query based on the map extent. So we only want to find water lines that are of cast iron and a diameter less than or equal to 150 within the current map extent. So I'm going to pass that map extent. And there's this extent property to our geometry input here. And if we go ahead and you know, rerun this, we can see we are only getting seven features within the current map extent that are um, you know, cast iron and less than or equal to 150. So there we're starting to interact with the map to perform these number of operations. Now, in this scenario here, I used a URL as input. The other option available is to use a layer. Now let's just uh, give us one more space here. I'm gonna search for the get layer activity and drag this in. Now this uh, is an activity that requires a layer ID as input. Uh, for the most part, this is gonna be the name of the layer in your web map that are using. So in my scenario, that layer name is called water lines. You can kind of confirm that if you go to your web map here, uh, sorry, this is our web map. Um, and here you can see my layer name is called uh, water lines. So here I've supplied that as input. It's called water lines and it gives me an output layer and I can go into here and type layer one dot layer. And if I rerun this, you know, it's you can see there's this get layer operation that uh, fires. And then here we can see we've got seven features. If we look at our query, um, you know, it doesn't look any different really, but we can now confirm that we're actually using the layer from the web map as input rather than a hard coded uh, URL. Um, so hopefully that gave you an overview on how you can use the query layer activity within workflow to return different uh, features and results. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.